In this section, we'll be looking at the relationships between force, work, power, and energy. If we recall, force is just a measure of a push or a pull upon an object. And when we calculate force, we're going to use this equation here. Force equals mass times acceleration. The units of force are typically newtons, where one newton is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. Work is equal to force times distance. So work is the energy needed to move an object against a force through a certain distance. So if we calculate force, we can plug it into our work equation, and then we just need to look at the distance over which we completed that force. Uh, the units of work are a newton times meter, right, force times distance, which we shorthand and call a joule. Then we have power. Power is just work over time. It's a measure of how quickly work is done. So once you have work, you can plug it into your equation and calculate how much power based on how long you spent doing that work. Um, so because it's just work over time, it's joules over seconds, which we abbreviate with the unit watt. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. All of these are related to energy, which is just the ability to do work. So work and energy are sometimes used interchangeably because work is really the action of it and energy is the ability to do it, to exert a force across a distance. So energy is typically measured in joules as well, though oftentimes, for instance, on our power bill, it's reported in a kind of weird unit called a kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hours are literally just the kilowatts times the hours in some action of work. So we need to be able to use these equations to look at the relationships between these four pieces, force, work, power, and energy. And the hardest part really, I think, is just matching up our units, remembering these relationships. So let's see how we can use these relationships and calculate some of these guys. So let's start with an example where we really have to go through several steps. How much power is required to lift the barbell in this picture in 1.2 seconds? And it tells me that gravity has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, what we can do is say, okay, it's asking how much power, so I'm obviously going to use power is equal to work over time. And I have the time. The time is 1.2 seconds, but I don't have the work yet. So I say, okay, I must need the work equation. Work is equal to force times distance. Now, if I look at the picture, my distance is equal to 2 meters, but I don't have a force yet. So I say, okay, I must need to calculate my force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So my mass of the whole barbell is going to be 50 kilograms. And my acceleration was provided is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So we say, okay, finally I have enough to actually calculate a number. So when I multiply these, I get 490. And a kilogram times a meter per second squared, that automatically turns into the unit newton. So keep in mind that relationship, one newton is equal to a kilogram times meter over second squared. So when we calculate force, it should come out in my newtons. Now we have a force, we can go back and plug it in up here. So now I know my force is 490 newtons, so I can calculate my work. 490 newtons times 2 meters gives me 980. But here again, we have to be careful. We have a newton times a meter, so when we calculate this, we turn that into joules, because 1 newton times meter gives me 1 joule. So oftentimes these, uni these units are changing as we go from one equation to the next, which can be a little confusing. But now we have our work, so now we can put it up here. So power was equal to work over time, so we're going to plug in my 980 joules. So 980 divided by 1.2 gives me 817. And joules per second, that unit of power turns into a watt because one watt is equal to joules divided by seconds. So once again, once we get it out, it turns into this slightly different unit. We don't have to memorize any of these relationships. They will all be provided, but we do need to recognize them. Okay, when I do power, I should get out watts, work, joules, force, newtons. Let's look at another example. 
How much energy or work does it require to illuminate a 50 watt bulb for eight hours? So what I like to do, of course, is make a list. So it's asking for how much work is required. Um, it's telling me that it's a 50 watt bulb and it's gonna take place over eight hours. One thing I like to do is try and figure out, okay, I have all those equations to know which one I need I should look at what my units tell me. Watts is a measure of power. So by looking and recognizing I have a 50 watt bulb, I know that it, what it's really telling me is that the power is equal to 50 watts. Hours, of course, is a measure of time. So once I see that I need work and I have power and time, it becomes more obvious that in this case, I just need to plug them into this equation. Power is equal to work over time. So we need to rearrange for the work piece. So we can just multiply both sides by time. If we have trouble rearranging, we can do the same thing we did with density, which is where we make this triangle. Power is equal to work over time. And since I want to solve for work, I see that work is just going to be power multiplied by time. Now what I have to be careful about is I, I, just like with density, I have to make sure my units match before I can plug them into my equation. So a watt is really a joule over a second. So we, when we do work, we want to end up in joules, so we want to think about what a watt really means. So when I multiply power and time, if I want my units to cancel, the time has to be in the same type of unit, and right now it's not. I have seconds uh, up in my power, and I have hours in my time. But that's okay, because that's a, uh, an easy fix. I'm just gonna turn my hours into seconds. So one hour, of course, is equal to 60 minutes, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we can see we can cancel hours and minutes. So I figure out the total amount of time is 28,800 seconds. Now I can just plug them into my equation. Work is equal to power multiplied by time. My power is 50 joules per second because that's what a watt is. My time is 28,800 seconds. I see my seconds cancel in this case, so I just end up with joules, which is what I wanted. And I get a pretty large number, so I'm going to write it in scientific notation. I get 1.44 times 10 to the sixth joules. So again, think about what kind of, what these units tell you about what kind of quantity you have. Is this force, work, power, energy? And then think about what equation you're going to need. Now there's one time where we actually don't really use an equation. It's a little deceptive. So let's look at an example of a, a little bit of a tricky problem and it involves these kilowatt hours. Whenever you see a kilowatt hour, you're gonna do something slightly different, which is get something into this weird unit. So let's look at this problem. The average cost of power in Georgia in June 2016 was 12 cents per kilowatt hour. What's the cost of illuminating a 50 watt bulb for eight hours? So the question really is how much money you're gonna to have to spend. And what it tells you is that you're gonna, it's gonna cost you 12 cents per kilowatt hour. You have a 50 watt bulb, so we know that's a power and our time here is eight hours. Now based on the last problem, since we saw power and time, we'd be really tempted to pull out that equation and calculate the work. And you could do that, but in this case, there's a much easier way. Anytime you have a cost like this and it has the kilowatt hours, the easiest thing to do is use your power and time and turn them into kilowatt hours. So if you want kilowatt hours, it's just however many kilowatts you have times however many hours. We just need to multiply them. And if we do it this way, then it's gonna make my life much, much easier. So first of all, what we have right here is watts. So I need to turn this into kilowatts. But that's easy, because I know how to do metric conversions, and I know that one kilowatt is equal to 1,000 watts. So I'm gonna get 0 0.050 kilowatts. So now I can just plug them into this equation up here. I have 0 0.050 kilowatts and I have eight 
hours. Really simple. So my total number of kilowatt hours is just going to be 0 0.40 and kilowatt times hours gives me kilowatt hours. Draw a line here so we're not confused. Once I have kilowatt hours, all I need to do is multiply by the cost. So I know that I'm going to have to use 40 kilowatt hours and that for each kilowatt hour it's going to cost me 12 cents. So my kilowatt hours will cancel and I'll end up with my dollar sign and I multiply those and I get 0 0.048. Now this one I can round because we never care about really fractions of a cent when we're paying our bill. They just get rounded up. So I'm just going to round it to the nearest cent. So this is going to cost me 5 cents um, or a nickel. So this one we did a little differently. We didn't use an equation and the key there that tipped me off was this use of kilowatt hours. Anytime you're given this cost per kilowatt hour, the easiest thing to do is to take your power and your time, convert those into kilowatt hours. So turn the watts into kilowatts. If your hours wasn't in hours, you'd want to convert it to hours. So get kilowatts times hours. You multiply them together and then you can just do kilowatt hours times the cost to get the total amount you're going to spend. So it's a little weird, but this is probably the most practical application of what we're doing so you can figure out how much it's going to cost you to run certain appliances in your home.